of this action, you'll be starting a home seed bank to increase your household resilience and to utilize small, slow solutions to create abundance in your garden with your very own perpetual supply of seeds. Home seed banks provide us with a powerful symbol of independence and renewal, but there's lots of practical advantages to saving your own seeds as well. By saving the seeds from your best garden plants year after year, you are actively creating locally adapted and resilient varieties over time. Plants, flowers, fruit and vegetables that are far better adapted to your local microclimate than packets of seeds from far away. Saving seeds is also a community service of the highest regard. By saving and stewarding locally adapted varieties into the future, you are becoming a seed keeper and increasing the resilience of your entire community to be called upon when they need you most. So, let's get started. To start your seed bank, you'll obviously need either some seeds or some plants. You may choose to take the route of learning about seed saving and preparing to save seed at the end of this season from the plants or seedlings you're going to grow now. Or you may choose to acquire some seeds up front and start from that point. It's up to you. If you're on the lookout for seeds, check with your local community garden or get onto your local gardener's online swap group or network or even local classifieds and see if anyone is swapping or selling locally grown seeds. If not, no problem. Just source some seeds or seedlings that you'd like to grow and that you'd like to save and go from there. Now, before we begin, a few basics of seed saving. Some seeds will save better than others because of their plant breeding. There is a whole wide world of plant breeding out there. So to simplify, you want to start with open pollinated varieties rather than hybrid varieties of plants. Look for an F1 or an F2 on your seed packets of seedlings, which will indicate a hybrid variety. Or if you're not sure, look up the variety's name on the internet. If it's a hybrid, it may grow very well and produce very nice fruit and vegetables for that first season, but its seeds will not be suitable for seed saving to maintain that same variety. This is because hybrid seeds and plants are a cross of two different varieties combined to give special traits or hybrid vigor. These seeds are not designed to be saved as the next generation of that plant will not grow true to type. You don't want to go to all the trouble of saving seeds from your very favorite tomato only to find next year that the seeds grow into a completely different and possibly less tasty or resilient variety. So stick to open pollinated seeds. Open pollination simply means that the plant has been pollinated out in the open in a patch of only that variety rather than pollinated in a lab setting. Happily, Open pollinated varieties include all the heritage and heirloom varieties, which by default have been saved out in the open year after year, sometimes for many centuries. So you'll have plenty of varieties to choose from. The next thing to be aware of with seed saving is that generally speaking, you want to keep your plant varieties pure and not have them cross pollinate. This doesn't have to be a big deal. Do some research on your plants and find out what their particular potential for cross-pollination is and whether you need to be careful where and when you plant it. Super easy vegetables to save include beans and peas. This is because the flowers of both of these plant families are self-fertilizing, so you can be fairly sure that they won't cross-pollinate with anything else. A broad bean will beget more broad beans and a purple pea will produce more purple peas. It's a great place to start building a seed bank. Other vegetables like tomatoes need a little more care. While tomato flowers are self-pollinating, as they are what is called a complete flower with both male and female parts, they can cross-pollinate with other tomato varieties if grown next door to each other, as pollinators like bees visit multiple flowers in your garden. The simple solution here is to keep your tomato patches apart all your climbing cherry tomatoes over here and all of your beefsteak tomatoes over here. This way, the flowers will most likely be pollinated by the same variety and consequently, the seeds will remain pretty much true to type. Some vegetables like the cucurbit family, which includes pumpkins, squash, melons and cucumbers, have distinctly male and female flowers on the same plant. Therefore, some of these varieties need to be planted well away from each other so they don't cross-pollinate 
and give you a half pumpkin, half zucchini next year. Get yourself a good seed saving book to figure all this out. It's not confusing once you understand the basics and this stuff is essential for any seed saving gardener to know. Let's move on to saving some seeds. I'd recommend you start with just a few varieties. Get the hang of those and then go through the entire seed saving process. Once you're underway, add a few more varieties. Two jars of well stored seeds is far better than 10 random bags of seeds that you never quite get around to processing properly and therefore never make it into your seed bank. Remember, we're after small, slow solutions here. So start at the start, whatever that means for you. I'm going to start with a few harvests that we have around us at the moment. Cucumber, fennel, tomato and beans. So saving cucumber seeds is fairly straightforward. You want to choose a really mature specimen, which is looking, you know, a little bit past what you would like to eat, but something that's firm and is still obviously, you know, it hasn't gone rotten or anything. And all we're going to do is remove the seeds, dry them on paper, label them, and then store them. As with all the other seeds, they need to be well dried before they go into storage so they don't go mouldy. But it's a fairly straightforward process other than that. Cut your cucumber. And as we can see, there's lots of seeds in here and they're a bit gooey and ready to be saved. All right, so then you want to get a piece of paper, any paper, scrap paper is fine. And then it's a fairly simple process of just scooping the seeds, which will still be quite wet, out onto the paper. And there you have it. You need to label it, and then you want to store it somewhere where the seeds can dry for as long as that takes. You want it to be out of the sun, somewhere with airflow. You don't want the sun on seeds as they dry in this context. Once they're dry, pick them off the paper and put them in a seed packet that's well labelled with a variety, where they came from, and the date. Now for fennel, you want to collect the seed heads when they're nice and mature. They've gone brown, but preferably before they've fallen off the plant, obviously. So collect some fennel, and then all you need to do is to get it into a paper bag, label that paper bag, tie some string on it, and hang it up somewhere, again, that's out of the sun, that has good airflow and isn't too humid, and leave that for a week or two. Once the fennel is dry, you can give it a bit of a bash inside the bag to help take it off the heads. And then get it out of that bag and into a bowl. Once you've got your fennel into the bowl, take all the seeds off the plant. You'll be left with what is just the fennel seeds and little, little bits of stuff from the plant. You now need to winnow these seeds. And that means passing the seeds from one bowl to another bowl underneath, doing that a few times to let all the other chaff or the other little bits of stuff, which aren't the fennel seeds, blow away. Do this outside in a not too strong wind. And the result that you will get is clean fennel seeds, which will then be ready to be put in an envelope labelled and stored. Saving beans is fairly straightforward, which is another reason it's a good one to start with. You want the beans to be fairly dry in their pods, then take them off the plant and dry them out. You can dry them out in the pods or you can remove them from the pods and dry them as beans. Like all the other seeds, you don't want to dry them in the sun. You want to put them in a basket or on a plate or something like that and dry them somewhere with good airflow out of the sun for a week or two until they are completely dry. The best way to test that your beans are dry, and this is really important with beans, is to do the fingernail test. Stick your fingernail into the bean and if it doesn't make a dent, they're dry enough to save. If your fingernail does make a dent, Put them back where you had them and dry them for maybe another week. 
And once they are hard to bite and hard to dent, they're ready to save. Here's some broad beans that we've saved. And yep, really great plant to save, very straightforward. Only save your best ones and eat the other ones. Let's talk about tomatoes. Tomatoes can be saved in quite a few ways and there are some resources below to take you through the various ways you can do this. One of the ways you can save tomato seeds is via the fermentation method. And this is all about fermenting the seed coating on the tomato seeds to allow it to break down a bit. Studies have shown that fermenting the tomato seeds slightly may increase the seeds viability and their ability to ward off seed borne diseases. So it's something to try if you like, or you can just do it this fast way, the same as the cucumbers. To ferment your tomato seeds, get some mature specimens of tomatoes that you'd love to save, cut them in half, and then squeeze the seeds out into a small jar with some water in it. Just a bit of water, it doesn't need to be much. Squeeze the seeds out. You can use a spoon if you like, I just squish them. Make sure you know what type of tomatoes is in this jar. If you have multiple types of tomatoes, label them. And then leave those tomatoes in that water for about a day or two, 24 hours. Some people think maybe the optimum fermentation time. Some people leave it for five days. Once your tomato seeds have been on your kitchen bench for at least a day, they will have fermented slightly. And as I said, this helps break down the gelatinous coating on the seeds. Once they're fermented, sieve out the seeds. You might need to wash them under some water as well. And then proceed to dry them on a piece of paper, the same as the cucumbers. Spread out your seeds on the paper and again, put them somewhere that they can dry. And when they are completely dry, pick them off the paper and store them in a seed packet. Or if you like, once they're completely dry and the paper is completely dry, you can simply fold up that paper and put that in an envelope. Lots of people do that. Saving seeds is a task and a stewardship that stretches back into our pasts. We're talking thousands of years here. And each and every year since that first year, people and communities have carefully saved the seeds of all the plants that you know and enjoy as vegetables today. Just think of that. These seeds have all survived revolutions, the downfall of societies, and crossed continents and oceans, all in the hands of seed keepers who stewarded them from year to year, from our ancestors all the way to you today. Seeds are our history and also our future. So not only is creating a home seed bank good fun and a way of learning about plants while also saving money, it also links us to our past and future communities in a fundamental way. A small and slow solution with the largest effects imaginable. Good food and nutrition for all, for generations to come. There's lots of links below to our favourite seed saving guides, networks and websites. So go do some research and get seed saving. And once you have a seed bank, make sure you share your knowledge and your seeds with all the other people around you. Good luck.